Looking into the mirror hasn't always been the easiest thing for me to do, yet that unease helped me understand more about myself, the way I see personal expression, and how it can change lives. How? An art class assignment in my freshman year of high school. The objective was simple, draw and shade a self-portrait. The key? To gaze upon ourselves for hours on end in mirrors for accuracy. So. The 12 by 24 paper was distributed, my eyes on my face, pencil on paper, I slowly built my head and torso. Eraser in hand, every line was adjusted and tweaked, for I tried to correct myself, as if that was something I could do. It was here, in my freshman year of high school, fresh off the brinks of my first puberty, that I realized just how disconnected I was from the jigsaw puzzle that was my body and mind. As my teacher worked his way about the classroom, I was constantly told, just look in the mirror, as he saw me constantly trying to erase and change what I saw. But that mirror, everyone else seemed to be successful in their portraits and likenesses, but, that, but I couldn't, for that mirror made me all too aware of the truth of who I was living as someone I wasn't. And this truth began to manifest itself through in, through my, in my art. And in that, something happened. And this was my initial ripple that would affect my life to come. The discomfort of my physical self led me back to my other fear. Not of my appearance, but the fact that I might be transgender. The word that I came across at age 13 the word that scared me because of all of the negative connotations surrounding it. Shock stories on Jerry Springer, murders, suicides, celebrity scandals, and oh yeah, the real horror. The fact that the definitions started matching with their own thoughts. I wondered, how could I possibly live like this? How would I be taken seriously for school? College admissions? Career prospects? Would anyone be remotely interested in settling down with me? starting a family, and most importantly, what would people think of my family? At this point, the fear made it seem as if I would never come out. But remember, ripples just don't stop. The effect continues. I found hope online, and it was like the, the transgender community came out of the word woodwork as I looked at social media instead of mainstream media. I found successful people, real, live, trans adults in the arts, STEM, everywhere, living their truth. I found guides on coming out, safe chest finding methods, words of motivation and empowerment to just keep living and being. I finally found spaces to explore myself and the positivity that my coming out could bring. So I came out to my family and community at the age of 15 in my hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. I came out amidst confusion, some yelling, and misinformation. Those closest to me feared for me, mourned even, for the Casey they knew wouldn't wear dresses anymore, sing soprano in the choir, or regrow her hair, as if those things defined me. They feared that I would harm myself through dangerous procedures ones they had only heard about on late-night television. They feared for my being, that I would soon become part of a statistic. Some people in my life actually left. Parents of my friends banned me from coming over again as if I was a negative influence. And new friends entered, ones that I've kept close ever since. Yet in the weeks that followed my coming out, I kept going and being. I was finally able to start looking in the mirror as I started presenting more masculinely and sharing my own truths. And eventually, I shared these truths with my family and surrounding communities, and tensions began to ease. And soon after I began my physical transition through testosterone, I found peace. I found a place to rest. I proudly wore the colors of the transgender pride flag as evident in my art. Pink, white, and blue. The structure of testosterone coursed through me and gave me a restructured face and a new voice, one that I am comfortable with projecting to you all as I am now. 
I finally saw that I had found my way out of the pain of the previous years of waiting and trying to verbalize everything I wanted to be amidst negative media. A teacher that told my eighth grade history class that people with those lifestyles would go to hell and peer pressure to be like everyone else. The windows in my piece were my iconography for finally seeing the outside, seeing that I had support and that I could, despite my initial fears, live as who I was. Through finding my own peace of mind and body, I knew I had to give back to the community that had helped me. For the things I feared in the beginning still exist today. Being transgender is not always as easy and smooth as a brush of paint on a canvas. On December 28, 2014, 17-year-old Leela Alcorn took her own life to escape the abuse of conversion therapy and her unaccepting home in Ohio. Two weeks later, 20-year-old Pappy Edwards, a trans woman of color, was murdered in my hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, after it was found out that she was trans. The messages of perpetual violence and abuse toward transgender people like Leela and Pappy and the hundreds of other cases reported and unreported each year are the ones that scared me. Along with this, we are being perpetually criminalized. Just two weeks ago in North Carolina, House Bill 2 was passed, meaning transgender people like me must use the restroom in accordance to our gender assi assigned at birth or be penalized by law. So to give back and add some visibility to these issues and help youth and um, uplift my community, I gave my first of many workshops to empower LGBT youth through the arts and to explore identity in a safe space. That space, pencil and paper, the very same things that I feared in the beginning, but that also helped me find my being. As my last art and identity lecture ended just a few weeks ago, I realized that my initial ripples had created waves that have reached all the way out here to California and to the world as I work to empower youth through my writing on Huffington Post. Educating the misinformed and empowering those whose visibility may be hindered through a lack of support from community, religious restraint, and family is so important. Even in today's world of supposed transgender visibility at an all-time high. So what can we do? For starters, let's fund the arts. Seriously, I am a broke college student as it is, and studying graphic design is no joke. It is expensive. Second, Let's foster expression through these mediums. Third, let's provide accessible health care for trans and gender nonconforming individuals of all ages and classes. Let's make it so that there's no more hashtag trans health fails. Let's train teachers, professors, and mental health advisors on issues of trans identity. Why not start here with safe zone ally training at Cal Poly Pomona? Let's make the journey easier. Let's show the world that transgender and gender nonconforming individuals are visible, valid, and here to stay. In clay, film, pencil, paper, paint, and in all dimensions of life. To make it so that person looking into the mirror, wondering if they'll make it to the next steps, can see his, her, their, er, ver, zir's self staring back at them with a smile. Thank you.